change you know, I change plans all the time like I do out in the world. Yeah. It rains, you know, we just do the same thing. Yeah. Come to church and shout and sing, yeah. preach and enjoy the Lord yeah. on our way to heaven. We're somebody going somewhere, people. Yeah. We, we ain't just a bunch of hillbillies that don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. A bunch of hillbillies that do know what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, but it sure is a blessing to be here tonight. Yeah. I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed all this, all this, all this week. You uh, know Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I appreciate uh, uh, the Lord. Amen. The Lord. Amen. But the Don said, God's here. That's true. The Lord's here tonight. Yeah. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad you're here. But I'm really glad he's here. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't here. You'd be wasting your time. I wouldn't. Right. They come out with a, one of them Christian, whatever that is, movies a few years ago. And everybody said, said you, God's not dead, Brother Danny. God's not dead. And I said, I know he wasn't dead. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And about a, they said they come out in part two. I said, I, what's the name of it? God, he's still not dead? <laughs> part three, he don't even feel bad. I, I don't have to see that movie to, to let me know God ain't dead. <laughs> but he, he's exactly the same yeah. as he was a hundred billion years ago. Yeah. And a hundred million years from now. Amen. With whom is no variableness. Right. He, don't, he don't vary. That's right. Neither shadow of turning. Right. Lord have mercy. Uh, I want to say several things right quick. Uh, all you preachers, uh, Brother Ted, y'all, uh, y'all, Jeff, uh, Gary, y'all leaving his church coming down here this weekend. This Loretta Lynn singing there. What a blessing. Uh, uh, what a blessing. All y'all coming tonight means, means a, a lot. You singers. From down in Dutchman Creek, folks from Mooresville. Uh, what a blessing. Down here on an old cold Saturday night like this. Having church. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the pastor. Now tomorrow is pastor appreciation day. Yep. Right? Yep. We done talked about that last night. So everybody, Amen. if you didn't if you didn't go buy, go buy some more tonight. Dollar store will still be open. Get them gift certificates there. Steakhouse. Wherever. Uh, Waffle House, uh, get him something nice for Pastor Appreciation Day. Amen. You let your pastor know Amen. that you appreciate him. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Listen, you got a man who believes the Bible, Amen. and believes the right Bible, Amen. and believes it right, Amen. you have a rare jewel, brother. Amen. You have a rare jewel. There are few and far between anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this modern, there's something weird about this new generation of preachers coming up. Right. It scares me. Worries yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's all, it's all, uh, Boy, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's all like some kind of psychology or something. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, you know, how to cope with your third child when it has a fever or something like that, you know. Right. Right. I mean, Lord have mercy, people. Them old preachers just preach the Bible. Yeah. 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 And, and I mean, we've got problems and stuff. I, I, we ought to help people, but you know what I mean. Uh, I, you got a man that preaches a book. You ought to appreciate it. Let that be a big day tomorrow. And I'm really sad that I can't be on that meal. Did we find out who's going to cook that meal, Brother Don? Not yet. Not yet. Hussons or Demons? <laughs> them, I'm assuming them are, right? He said us last night. Uh, We're working on it. All right. I'm sure that I'm sure that'll be great. And then and then I would like to say uh, I, I appreciate Brother Bobby here. Uh, I've, I've been around a lot of people about fighting battles since I've been saved and preaching, and I, I don't think I've ever seen a man uh, with his faith Amen. steady. Yeah. Right. Right. Good at you, brother. I mean that, brother. Yeah. You've been a help to me, brother. Yes, You've been an inspiration to me. Oh, God. Yes, we, God. Yes, and when all of us go through stuff like this, let's remember him. Amen. Remember him. Amen. Remember him. Uh, amen. He's helped me. He's been a blessing to me. And I admire you, brother. Yeah. And I know God's got something mighty, mighty special. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, well, well, let's take our Bible tonight. I know it's Saturday night and, and all of us. So let's take our Bible and get into Ecclesiastes chapter number 10, the book of Ecclesiastes. One of my favorite books in the whole Bible is Ecclesiastes. I, I, just, I love the book of Ecclesiastes. It, it just amazes me. Stuff that's in there. And unbelievable. And the whole book of Ecclesiastes, you have to understand it, is under the sun. 
If you don't get that phrase, under the sun, you get all mixed up in it. It's, it's a view of a man under the, in the sun in this life, uh, not due in eternity. So uh, it mentioned a little bit about judgment stuff, but you know what I mean. Uh, life here, problems here, and things we go through here. And chapter 10, uh, it starts out here, and I'm going to ask you to hold your places there if you don't mind. I'll do a little bit different than I did last night. I took that one verse and... Uh, uh, there's all kinds of different kinds of preaching, you know. There's, uh, you know, what one fellow said. He said, "You uh, take a text and preach from it, but don't never get back to it." Uh, I've heard that kind of preaching. I've heard, you know, you take a text and take a fit. I've heard that kind of preaching. And, and then there's some of when we stay in it for a little while. And I like to do that tonight. Ecclesiastes chapter ten, verse number one. Then flies, cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Now, that verse is what I'm going to preach about tonight. And I'm going to preach about dead flies in the drugstore. Now, the apothecary is a, a drug druggist or a pharmacy where they would dispense medicine for apothecary it is. And he said, if he's dead flies in that ointment, it stinks. Yeah. And then he proceeds from verse 2 on down to mention a few things that I'll point out. In verses 2 and 3, a wise man's heart at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Help us with that, Brother Don. <laughs> Come on, scholars. Uh, think. You ever seen a left-handed man try to do something, offer or try to do something with your left hand? That's what a fool is trying to do right. Yes, sir, it's right. off. It don't come natural for him. At least that's the best I can come up with. <laughs> <laughs> when he's a fool walking by the way, look at verse number four. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place for yielding pacify the great offenses. That means don't be stubborn. Sometimes you got to yield. you got to give in a little bit. Yeah, now, I say not, things don't always have to be your way. Right. 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 I, I'm the pastor of the church, and I am the pastor. They do whatever I want to, but it don't always have to go my way. Come on. If I went tomorrow morning and everybody said, Brother Danny, we feel like we ought to buy a piece of land up here. It's five acres. Now, even if I thought, I don't know about that. If that's what our church want to do, I'd do it. It don't always have to be what I say. Now, I can veto it. Sure. Yeah. The man, the pastor can veto it, right? He, can. he got veto power, and you should probably pay. But listen, everybody, it don't always have to suit you. Come on. Amen. 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 I mean, that's how it work in your marriage, right? Amen. You don't always get you when you're married. I feel sorry for you ladies if you're married to one of these little spoil, egotistical brats yeah. that, that twist the scripture all the time yeah. to always get his way. Yeah. Yeah. I feel sorry for you, ma'am. I'll pray for you. There's a lot of them like that. Oh, boy, they love that verse about that five men in subjection. They forget about 875 other verses in the scripture. And ignore it. I gotta read the scripture, I ain't got time for this, gotta talk. Gotta preach tonight, gotta get home, preach in the morning. Verse 6. Folly is set in great dignity. And the rich sit in the low place. That's pride. Verse 8. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. Whoso bringeth a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Remember that. Yep. That's worldly. God fixes a little fence around us and have all the fun you want run around in that little You break that hedge, a serpent will bite you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You get out of God's will, you get yourself in trouble. Yes, sir. Yeah. Verse number 10. If the iron be blunt and he do not whet, you know what a whet rock is? Yeah. Like you sharpen a knife with, right? Yeah. You sharp, if you don't sharpen your blade, your, uh, your axe, then you must put more strength to it. Yeah. In other words, you're going to work yourself to death trying to cut a tree down with a dull axe. Amen. You're supposed to keep the axe sharp. Amen. You can get more done and less work. Yeah. And every preacher in here knows exactly what that's like. Yes, sir. And I've beat my head against a tree uh, many a time. 
getting nothing done. They're going to spend a while with the Lord and get everything right. Cut that tree down just like that. Now, look at verse number 11. Uh, surely the serpent will bite without enchantment, and a babbler is no better. Right. Don't you just love that Bible, buddy? I, I know people that go to Babbler Baptist. <laughs> and I mean, that's all they do is babble. Babble, brother. Run down jaws all the time. Yep. Verse number 15. The labor of the foolish weary with everyone because he knows not how to go to the city, being unprepared. It's sad today. People don't know how to go to that city. Verse number, uh, or let's see, number 16. Woe to you when your king is a child. When you got a bunch of people ruling over you that are big babies. Childishness. Verse 18. Look at verse 18. Much slothfulness, the building decayeth. And through idleness of the hands, a house drops through. Your roof will fall in if you're too lazy to fix it. Come on. Yeah. Verse 19. Money answers all things. You know, money talks, right? Right. Yeah. right. It says bye-bye as soon as you get a hold of it. Uh, and and uh, it don't, money talks, but it don't hang around long enough to have a conversation. Right. Yeah. So I would preach on that tonight. Dead flies in the drugstore. Now, this scripture tonight, will I'll, I'll use and comment a little bit about as a pharmacy, uh, pre prescribing and preparing medicine. And the Bible we will use here, and you can help me if I'm wrong, preacher, uh, but I'm going to use it this way, about the apothecary being a picture of someone dispensing medicine. This whole world tonight is sick, people, yes. and we got the medicine that it needs, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when people come here to our church or your church or our, any church, and they're stinking in the church, uh -oh. it will sometimes turn them off so bad they don't take the medicine that we're trying to give them to help them. So I'm going to hit it from that angle tonight. I think I can do that without doing any damage to the scripture, right, Brother Don? And so tonight, I want to say this evening, brother, it is, it is, it is a little folly, a, a little sin in a church can hurt a church real bad. Amen. It is important how we live. It is important how we conduct ourselves in and out of the church. And not just preachers. I hear people say all the time, well, you're a preacher. Well, you're a Christian. And there ain't no two sets of rules, buddy. I don't know this. Everything, you say, well, a preacher shouldn't be this man. And I can show you where a Christian ought to be, every one of them things. In the Bible. If it's wrong for us to do it, it's wrong for you to do it. Yeah. Like we're talking about that. Uh, an old devil, I mean, if you, you, ever, you ever seen a, a, I mean, a dead fly, Lord have mercy. A lion's bad enough. Uh, we, yeah. you know, you're trying, you're trying to eat, you know, just, a, you know what the old people say? Old people say, uh, open the door and flies come in, shut the door and I'm sweating again. Life gets tedious, don't it? <laughs> Anybody ever heard that? You're way in the old time if you remember that. My mom took that up in the mountains. Open my door and flies come in. Shut the door and I'm sweating again. Now, I back then, people didn't have a screen. A screen door. So if you open the doors, the flies come in. If you shut it, you're sweating again. Life gets tedious, don't it? <laughs> That's what that song said. And it, it's like that. I said, oh, uh, old Billy Kelly said he had one time, he went to a house to eat. He said he went down there and had him a big old meal fixed. He said, Lord, she set down green beans and, and corn on the cob and, and there's mashed potatoes and iced tea. And, oh, he was about to die one. And he said, he said she brought in some uh, 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 all kinds of salad and dessert. There's some raisin biscuits sitting there. They're hot. Uh, and he reached and grabbed one of them raisins flew away. Uh, that's what it's like, them fly. Uh, now listen, brother, sometimes it happens like that. That's right. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you know, I hate to go. Don't you hate to go to a restaurant and uh, and find something in your food? I got a strong stomach. I, I, I really do. I mean, I, I mean, brother, I'm fine of hiring my food, and I have. I mean, I, I just say, well, I didn't, I pull it out and lay it over and floss the teeth with it when you get it. Uh, but uh, but uh, some people can't stand that. Some people can't stand it. I mean, they'll, they'll and if I ain't never coming back here again, probably some of you are like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, sir. I, we, was in, we and my girls 
went to a Chinese restaurant one day right after our church. <laughs> and we were sitting there eating on Sunday. And uh, you know, some in places, they, they pretty wrong with you, right? And they just start looking around. And one of my girls went, Daddy, Daddy, look. And right down under our table was a little mouse trap with a little dead mouse in it. And it was turned upside down. I said, he's dead, honey. It ain't bothering us one bit. I said, Mom said, anywhere there's food, there's rats. You got food, you got rats. All restaurants got rats. You know, he said, well, I got those clean rats. You don't know what in the world you're eating when you go to that place. Lord, I know them boys out in Marion, they used to, when we had a lose football game, and the other team cut, they spit on their hamburgers and, and everything else and served it that other day. Uh, you, don't, you don't know what you're getting. And, uh, uh, but I, it's, it's rough. I know, a, I know a girl that found a roach in an egg, she ate an egg roll, and eating this egg roll, Chinese place, and a roach inside it. Oh. And she gagged and went out. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what's worse than finding a roach in the egg roll. Hyper roach. That's bad. That's bad when it's like that. Now, I don't want no hyper roach. If you find a hole, thank God he's spared. That's right. Amen. Uh, I, remember, I remember lots of times I preached down through the years and I preached a lot of tent meetings and uh, brush harbors. Are you going to be, don't you know what brush harbors anymore? Uh, anymore? How many of y'all have been to a brush harbor? Right here? Okay. Well, we, we just preach brush harbors. People just take, people just take leaves and limbs and lay them over trump, trump, some uh, tree books or something and set chairs out there and have church. And uh, they'd set up in a little tent and I preached in a little tent revivals where they had them string lights, you know, spring through there, you know, and, and hype up wouldn't work, and, then, and it was wet, and you tell you you're going to get electrocuted and everything else. And, and what they'll do is real, they'll put them around, it's real dark, and they'll put one light right over top of the preacher's head. Yeah. Yeah. And every bug in 18 acres <laughs> is going to come right there to that light, and they'll start flying around like that right there. <laughs> got up and preached, boy, and it was just like, you know, and, and you know, people don't realize this, but when we're up here preaching like this, we ain't just spitting it out, we're sucking it in. Yeah. As a matter of fact, old timey preachers, they call them wind suckers. Yeah. That's what they call them, right? You heard that, ain't you, Brother Don? That old wind sucker, you know, the Bible said, how you better do So what I'm saying, the Bible said, uh, the Bible said, uh, I'm sorry, and, and anything that flies by you yeah. is going right in. It's true. It's true, and I've done it. I've done it. I've eaten bugs. Preacher. I mean, the Bible said, pa, pa, pa. And, you go, and you, you might as well just swallow it. Then you got it in your mouth. And they don't taste bad, but they're fuzzy. I remember hearing old J. Harold Smith. Y'all remember J. Harold Smith? Yeah. He said he's preaching one time and, and he's out in a meeting like that outside and that happened to him. And he said, uh, uh, he always bragged to his wife that he had scripture to back up everything he did. He said, I, he said everything I do, I got scripture for it. You ain't gonna catch me doing nothing. That's how I got over scripture. Well, he's a preaching one night. He did like I did. He sucked it in right there in a big gnat or fly or something. Went down here. He, he liked to gag and swallowed it and kept on preaching. His wife dying laughing over here. And, and on the way home, she said, uh, I see you swallow that bug out, preacher. And he said, yeah, well, what about it? What about it? She said, I thought you had scripture for everything you did. He said, I do. She said, you ain't got no scripture for that. He said, I do, done it. She said, you ain't got no scripture for that. So I said, what is, what is it? He said, he was a stranger and I took him in. <laughs> but but I, I don't know about that. That's what these dead flies are. Man comes to, man comes to the, uh, man comes to the drug store and there's old dead stinking flies in there. It's like, no thank you, no thank you. I'll just go, I'll just do somewhere else. And it's a sad thing tonight that a lot of people, when they find you, finally do get them to come to church. And they look up and there's a roach in the choir. Yeah. Oh, there's an old roach. Come on. Well, I know how he acts at work. <laughs> I don't throw up. I'm leaving here. I ain't never coming back to this place. I'm telling you tonight, I, oh, there's a hire in the special. Oh, there's a hire in the special. Oh, great, I ain't never coming to this church again. That's what the little, rep, the little folly does to know that our reputation. We are a reputation of honor, people. We are the church of the living God. We are God's representatives on this earth. For heaven's sake, let's be a good representation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the Bible names a bunch of things there. And it, and it goes down through there and it 
ain't just, I mean, it just names it foolishness. Just foolishness. Just a bunch of junk. I mean, a profane uh, Hollywood music, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, I heard about a church one time uh, uh, back in the days. Well, you remember back in the days when people were, there was revivals going on everywhere. Back in the 70s, uh, when I was saved, uh, I'm telling you, buddy, it was, it was, it was revivals. It, it, was, it was not an uncommon thing at all for revivals to go two and three, three weeks. And the revival I got saved in went two weeks. And, and I, I, I preached some myself that went uh, 14 uh, uh, days and 20-something days. And, and uh, uh, many you know, the revivals breaking out everywhere. And this guy, he was preaching revival, this evangelist was, and he said... Uh, 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 the pastor, he said people's getting saved right and left all the time. People's getting saved all the time. And he said he noticed that it sort of slacked off a little bit. That's the fire started dying down in the church. And it got a little colder and a little colder. People quit getting saved, started getting dead, started getting dry, started getting boring. Come on. People started just dreading to come, tenants slacked up. And then he said, he said he, he was a pastor, and he said uh, he counseled people like most pastors do. And he said uh, he had to send him up a night on Monday night where he went down to the church and stayed in his office and counseled people. And he knows one come, there's having marriage trouble, next one having financial trouble, next one having physical trouble. Next, he said them counseling lines kept getting longer and longer and longer and longer, where all he was doing was counseling. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, they all got to praying. They all got everybody got on their knees and started praying. People got right with God again. Amen. Power of God came down. Amen. Church got on fire for again. Uh, fire again. And he said that counseling line got littler and littler Amen. and littler and littler. You know what that tells me tonight? That tells us, brother, if we'd really get on fire for God, about 90% of our counseling wouldn't Amen. even be necessary. Amen. Listen, God, God can fix more than five minutes at this yeah. altar yeah. with a husband and wife holding yeah. hands, yeah. giving their life to him, yeah. than 15 books and 18 seminars yeah. and all the counseling you could ever go to. Yeah. If a man and woman get in the altar and get right with God and say, honey, I love you enough to die for you. And she said, honey, I'm going to reverence you and respect you. And we're going to put God first. Brother, that'll take care of us all of hours and hours and hours of trying to figure this out and figure that out. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got a bunch of foolishness in church tonight. Uh, everybody, you know what most counseling for, and I do it, I'm not against it. The Bible talks about counseling. I'm not totally against it, and I counsel people all the time. About 90% of it is somebody wanting you to tell them that they're okay for doing what they're doing. I'm telling you tonight, brother, if we get right with God, let it ever have to stop. Amen. 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 That's right. When the church gets fired up and right, oh, my Lord, what a difference it would make. Like that man's had three kids. Like that man said he had three kids, and he said, all in years I could have swore I had four because every time something happened, none of them did it. <laughs> Your parents know what I'm talking about? What me? <laughs> That's what church is, isn't it? It's never you, is it? It's always somebody else. That's right. Always somebody else. Awkward, out like a, like a fool's hat, hard as that is left, trying to do something to right handed and your, and, and your left hand, your right handed and trying to do it with your left hand. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says this let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Well, amen. 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 We don't yeah. go, we don't live right to be saved. That's right. We live right because we are saved. Right. As a matter of fact, we don't even go to church to be saved. We go to church because we are saved. I was in uh, Walmart down there in, in Morganton one day. It was, it was one of them weird Walmarts. It ain't really a Walmart. It's green. And, and it ain't got nothing but food. And uh, uh, I, went, I went in there and, and uh, I went to get, get something and... Uh, they just built it. It's new, and I went in there to check it out. And I went there, and I seen this old boy that I ain't seen, and I don't know when. I said, hey, brother, how you doing there, man? And he, he had this old old gal with him. They were about 35, 35 years old. And I said, uh, how you doing, buddy? He said, pretty good there. How are you, Danny? I said, fine. I said, uh, man, I ain't seen you in a long time. Why don't you come to church? 
And that woman that he was with spoke up and she'd say, she said, I don't have to go to church to go to heaven. No, I wouldn't. And she answered for him. And I said, uh, no, you don't. You don't have to go to church to go to heaven. And she said, he's with me every day because I had breast cancer and he got this and that and he brought me through my troubles. And I, and I, I said, ma'am, You've got a tremendous testimony. You need to be in church helping other people. Yeah. <laughs> and tell them, I, said, I said, listen, I'm going to tell you something, lady. I don't have to go to church either. Right, right. I don't go to church because I have to. Right. 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 Amen. Right. I go to church because I want yes, to. Amen. Amen. It would hurt me if I didn't get to go to church. Yes, I can't imagine not getting to go to church. Amen. Lord, help us not to have to get the point. We're getting, that's why I admire this man right here the other night. He was hurting so bad. He had to stay back there, brother. Listen, I know people's got one bugger and one's other nose, and the whole family stays at home. No, you don't. Right. Nobody, I'm going to say you have to. Right. Crazy bunch of nuts. And you know what? I told her, I said, you know, God could really use your testimony. I, we, and before I got through, she said, well, you know, we, we might not need to come. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you sure do, you old hypocrite. Yeah. <laughs> I said, let, let me tell you something, brother. It's a sad day when it like that. I think people ought to do the best. Yeah. This man here is doing his best. You're a nurse or some something they make you work on Sunday, uh, this some night, and you do your best yeah. right. to get to every service you can. That's right. a whole lot different than a man that stays home on Sunday eating and watch football. Yeah. 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 See, the Lord don't just look at how far you get. He looks at the obstacles you overcome and get them where you've got. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he's a fair judge. Yeah. Right. Amen. Uh, and, and you sometimes, so I, I, I mean people can't sing. I've seen people can't. See, I believe people came here. Uh, I see people and, and served God. Like a man one time, he said he was he's deaf and went to church every Sunday. Deaf, couldn't hear a thing. And they wrote him a note one time and said, why do you go to church every single Sunday? He wrote him back a note and said, I just want to let people know whose side I'm on. Amen. I said, hallelujah, brother. Amen. He said, it's Sunday morning, I don't know. I don't want my neighbors to see my car in the driveway on Sunday morning. Amen. Listen, brother, if I sit throwing up, if I sit throwing up this Super Bowl evening, and I couldn't even walk, I'd say somebody throw me in the back of my truck and haul me to church or, or at least put my car around the back so my neighbors won't think I'm laying out of the house of God. I watch football games. Amen. Amen. Well, to be honest with you, I was, I was, in, I was in Florida. Preaching a few months ago, I preached down there several times a year, and I was I down there preaching. And one night I wore a tie, you know I like colorful ties. I'm I'm uh, I like colors. Amen. Forgive me. And uh, uh, I like and I had a tie of orange and blue. Amen. Uh -oh. I walked in there that uh -oh. night, and you'd think the Holy Ghost came in. What am I said, I said, Hey man, there's my man right there. And look, I said, what? Uh -oh. I like that tie. Yeah. Said, Thank you. <laughs> Somebody else came out and said, you the man. You the man. You're on our team. I said, huh? <laughs> and it's one of them teams down there. Yeah. And they started the Florida Gators. Yeah. And I, I said, I didn't even know Florida had a team. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of them. Yeah. Now, you ain't going to like this even less. Some of you ain't going to like this even less. But I'm sick of preachers getting up and all they talk about is who's winning and who's losing. And I'm not against using sports for an illustration, but people, we're not sportscasters. Yeah. 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 It just about makes me sick. Here. I, here's what I told our church on Sunday, and it got quiet. Lord have mercy. I said, I hope Duke and North Carolina Tar Heels both lose every game this yeah. year, yeah. except when they play each other and I hope they both get beat. <laughs> Yeah. I mean that. Well, Lord have mercy, people. They're not God. They're not God. I mean, Y'all know me. I love basketball. I played this morning at the Y. This morning. Uh, and, and I beat everybody over. I was playing one on none. And, uh, I, 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 I love basketball. I'd rather shoot basketball each, each state some 
down. If I'm not real hungry. And but I tell you what, I love it. But for heaven's sake, a ball team ain't our God. God. The Bible said in the last days, people be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. People go to a ball game and scream like Comanche Indian. That's right. Come to church and sit like a wooden Indian. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I turned him down the other night down at Dustin Creek. Uh, uh, little, little Johnny, he's about five years old. He gets out there. Lord, he got out there. And look, this little can't even have a picture. Yeah. 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 Well, put the ball on a little stick right here. Yeah. 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 And, <laughs> Well, I think I lost some of y'all I'm not against sports. I'm against people making a God out of something. That's what I'm against. And a preacher that ain't against it ain't worth a dime. Put a, put a ball on a stick right there, and he still strikes out. Listen, listen people, when you strike out in T-ball, let's wait a couple of years. I see right there again. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Grandma up there jumping up and down, yeah. sitting on them concrete. Yes, Come on, baby. And he finally is like, and he, he don't even know which one. First base is that one. They grab him and turn him around. Here he goes to first base. And Grandma Joel, Lord, you'd think she won yeah. the lottery. <laughs> Churches. They're so quiet. Come on. Yeah. If you go, I don't think there's nobody in here. If you go to a quiet church, you might get out of there. Right. It's a cult. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Quiet churches are cults. Come on. Something weird about them people. Yeah. So anybody's weird. They can sit in church and be quiet the whole time. That's right. Amen. I had a story that said old grandma, she went to this church, and she shouted everywhere she went. She didn't care who liked it, who did. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, she, all you had to do is mention the name of Jesus. She Amen. shouted. Amen. Oh, I tell you what, she she went to an old, her church was snowed out or something happened. They didn't have it. She went to a big, dead, liberal church one Sunday morning downtown. She'd never been nothing like that in her life. They'd never seen nobody like her. She'd never seen nobody like them. She sat down right here on the second row, and they had, you know they got a pulpit on one side and a pulpit on the other side, and ain't nothing in either one of them. Yeah. They do that to give you the impression the Word of God ain't central and foremost and preeminent in that church. The pulpit's in the middle of this church. That means the preaching of the Word of God is preeminent. I'm one over, I'm one over here, and. Uh, Somebody stand up and read, somebody stand up and sing. Uh, but anyway, uh, they got up there that morning. Somehow or another choir sung a song and mentioned Jesus. Grandma started getting blessed. And Lord, she jumped up. I mean, she's one of them old fashioned grandmas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the old timey kind that shouted the bobby pins out of their house. <laughs> now Grandma's gone and bobbed it off laying around watching Oprah all day long. And ain't don't ever shout no more. Yeah. She jumped up and gets you to doing it time, you know. Doing it like, yeah. And then people like to die. Yeah. I said, oh, God, my goodness. What that, that fanatic. Get her out. And the pastor, he was minister, was up here, and he was embarrassed to death. And one of, one of the, one of the, us was, we're going to do some more. He said, get out of here. Get out of here. We got doctors and lawyers. And people think we're crazy. People like that in our church. And so the usher went down and said, calm down, ma'am. Calm down. She just, she didn't even know they was there. Yeah. She kept the shout. Woo! I got it. He said, uh. Oh. So the ushers grabbed her, one got under one arm, and the other got under another arm. And it's carrying her out down the aisle, her feet just dangling like that right there. Somebody heard her, she went out the door, she said, praise God! 
She said, when Jesus came in Jerusalem, he came in on one donkey. But she didn't say donkey. And I got two. <laughs> I come tell a blessing. Hey, man. Yeah, hey, listen, you may not be a sport. You might not be able to see. A little blind man one time said, uh, he, was, he loved the Lord, but he couldn't see nothing. And he, uh, he <laughs> said he went to church one night, and he was real good about praying with people. Anybody go to the altar, he prayed with them. Didn't care who he was, what the need was. You hit the altar, bam! And then we need people like that. Yeah. Anything that makes me mad, you preachers know what I'm talking about. I'm up here giving an invitation. Here comes somebody kneeling. I said, well, what did you ladies come and pray? And everybody just looked. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's praying over here. But one of you ladies, please come and pray. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any saved ladies in here tonight that can pray? That? And I, 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 that's a shame we have to do that. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. yes, sir. And he would pray with anybody. There's a big old giant man come in there one time. Lord, he's about seven foot tall. And they said he wore a size 22 shoe, like a shack. And brother, he said that man hit the altar one night. He got down there and started praying. That old man right down behind him put his hand on his feet and said, Lord, bless these two little fellas. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what? You know what? That old boy doing his best, wasn't he? He's doing his best. Yes, you pray. You doing your best? Are you doing your best? You know what? Roll off and uh, Bob Jones Sr. and him say, to do less than your best is a sin. Amen. To do less than our best is a sin. Man, that'll put some conviction on you. Have you done your best? If you've done your best, on like Ruckman said, if you've done your best, lay out and go to sleep at night and don't worry about it. Yeah. If you ain't done your best, do your best tomorrow. Amen. Come on, listen, brother. We, it's a dead fly in, a, in, a, in our, in our churches when we don't have a testimony like that. Stubbornness. Amen. Stubbornness is idolatry. That's right. about a preacher, another one that in great revival I'll tell you about a minute ago. And he said, he went to a church, and he says, great big old church, and they had everything just right. And he's, uh, everything was all in place, packed full that night. Singers in that, I mean, old-fashioned good singing. Everything was right. He got up and preached, and he said, it's tired of the banjo string. He said, it's, it was awful. That is 4 o'clock. He said, I went back to the motel. Went back Tuesday night, same thing. Everything was in place. Why wasn't nothing happening? Beautiful, big old building, packed full of people. People just sat there the whole time. He said, I prayed to God, I said, God, what's wrong? He said, Wednesday night, I got up and I've done it as hard as I could. He said, I preached as hard as I could preach. And he said, during that invitation, the whole service is like that again. He said, during the invitation, Nice, well-dressed, well-to-do looking lady stepped out back here and started down the aisle. And he said, she started coming down that aisle like that right there. And he said, I thought, Lord of God, we, we've hit pay dirt. We, it's, we're breaking loose. And he said, she never even made it to all of She stopped about this third row and turned in and grabbed another lady and started hugging her. And they both just started bawling. And he said they come out of that, uh, that pew and they both hit the altar. And he said when that happened, he said people just started coming from everywhere. He said people started getting saved. He said it just busted loose. And what had happened was both them ladies was like you know, like in charge of stuff. Like one was in charge of the ladies' prayer meeting, sending the flowers, secretary. You know, he's had a lot of a lot of a position in the church. And, and everybody knew them and everybody looked at them and they were mad at each other. Yeah. And both of them was too stubborn to go in, to the other. No, so I don't know. Well, I saw him. You know, and neither one of them would do it. Yeah. And when that woman made that step, yep. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Made things right with her sister. That whole 
church broke loose in revival. Yeah. 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 Lord, I heard that and I thought, Lord, have yes, mercy. Yes. Yeah. I would hate to think yeah. that yeah. I and my stubbornness yeah. is holding back God from well, moving. Oh, yeah. 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 And I wasn't going to be in your shoes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. You got to get down on your knees and crawl up here. Come on. Do it. Yeah. 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 You got to eat some crow, brother. I mean, yeah. uh, make a fool out of yourself. Go to your eyes. Sometimes the big you got to be the bigger person. I, 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 know, I know you preachers. I, I guarantee you, and I ain't got time to get off on all this. But this uh, nose book, people on nose book, everybody on nose book now. Twelve people nose and everybody else's business. Come on, come on, they call it Facebook, but that ain't the right name. That's right. It's Nose Book. Amen. Amen. And I know, don't, don't, please don't come and tell me. I know that you only use yours for prayer requests. Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> That's all you use yours for, just like you don't watch nothing on TV but the news and the ball game. Right. Uh, come on. And a church got to all pieces over it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I know a good church right now has lost about four families. Got the people getting on it, da 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 da, and I didn't see it. I don't want to see it. I don't know how to get on it. I don't have it. My wife don't. Have, if you're ha if you're having, it, I'm not saying you're wrong. If, if you use it right, I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just like anything else, phone, anything else. Sure. You can use it right. You can use it wrong. Yeah. But they they yeah. tore this church all to pieces. Yeah. It's easy to get big and brave when you yeah. get tired. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. They've got enough guts to go to somebody yeah. and say, hey, let's go get this thing right. I know a church down in Georgia where the pastor resigned, had to resign his church because all the women in the church was saying stuff about his wife on those book. And, and she, you know, she said, I ain't going back. I mean, he, and he just caused a big mess. He had to leave, left the stable. Wow. Yes, sir. And sometimes it ain't. It ain't that liquor store down yonder yeah. right. Come on. that's hindering us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. I hope, sort of, God, none of y'all didn't go to the liquor store last night. Yeah. I, we ain't that bad off, are we? I don't think it's a drug, the, the meth no. dealer down here right. that's stopping revival from coming yeah. to us. Oh, no. It's us and us. Yeah. 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 Good Good right. right. And I don't doubt in my heart one bit. <clears throat> There's somebody in here tonight got hard feelings mm -hmm. towards somebody else. I don't know that. Come on. Maybe they may not even be here at this church. Maybe another church. I know preachers that are mad about something that happened, mm -hmm. yeah. and both of them are mad at each other. Mm -hmm. I knew two preachers. Preacher left this church and started another church, and the preacher they left got mad, you know, and cut him down, cut him down, and he said one night. Is that our youth rally? Both of them was. And spoke <laughs> once. He said, God started moving, people started getting saved, and the Lord said, You better go make it right with him. Amen. He'd run his mouth so much about that other preacher. Mm -hmm. And he said, I felt like I couldn't get right. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to that man and I apologized. Yes, right. Amen. And I said, I want this out of me, off of me. Yes, yes. Amen. Now, I'm not saying you have to go air out your dirty laundry. No. If somebody knows you got something against them, get it right. If nobody knows about between you and God, just get it right with God. Sometimes it bothers me. People say, Brother Daniel, I'm sorry for all that bad stuff. I said, yeah. what would you there say? You go. Now, I got a hard feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if they don't know about it, just let it go. Yeah. I knew a guy one time got up and started confessing this and confessing that. Confessing yeah. all his weakness. His wife left him that night. <laughs> so let's don't tell all of our sins. Right, right, right. Private sins confess private, public sins confess public. Come on, preacher. Good rule to go by. Yeah. Let's get it right. We're gonna have revival. Yes, sir. And I believe you can and are and will. Amen. I've heard about all the people that's been saved here lately. Good that's good. wonderful. Amen. That's wonderful. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you how to keep it going. See a fly. Throw it out. That's right. That's right. Pick it out and throw it out. Yeah. Get your spiritual tweezers. Yeah. Yeah. And reach in there and pull that thing out and get rid of it. Yeah. Because yeah. it makes the apothecary stink. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. God help us. Let's, get Let's stand by here.